good morning. And uh, let me start by thanking you for inviting me. The MPI is, um, is something I'm a very big fan of. Um, Nigeria was uh, the first country in sub-Saharan Africa. to conduct the, uh, the MPI in 2012 with, in collaboration with the UNDP. And in my opinion, I think um, Nigeria is probably one of the best examples of, um, for the implementation of the MPI. I think there are very few countries that epitomize that paradox of plenty in the midst of, um, should I say, lack. I mean, we have 170 million people, over 30 million households. We are now the largest economy in the continent, by GDP anyway, uh, the 26th in the world. We have the highest um, uh, foreign direct investment coming to the country, um, sixth largest um, producer of oil, gas, and so on. But despite all this, poverty has, by the income approach anyway, seems to be remaining extremely high. I think at last count was about um, 60%. And I think that um, it also helps as far as the politics is concerned because it's an index and it largely focuses on the trend. Is it going up or going down? What we find in Nigeria is that most politicians focus on the magnitude of poverty. So even if you uh, have a situation in a particular state where poverty is coming down, despite that, the, you, you find the governors of those states still criticizing the figure because the absolute figure is still very high. So nobody is concentrating on whether or not it's going up or it's going down, and what are we doing that is helping it to go down? Nobody is focusing on that. We are focusing on the absolute amount. So I think it also helps in terms of the, um, the politics, trying to get this out. And I think in terms of using um, the income approach, um, we have several problems within Nigeria. I remember being at an executive council meeting where the, one of the ministers would say things like, well, in this state, you have um, people generally in the rural areas would go around climbing trees to pluck mangoes in the very rural areas. And then as far as he's concerned, if you, if you calculate the price of those mangoes, multiply the number of mangoes they eat every day, it's above a dollar a day, a dollar a day. So as far as he's concerned, poverty is not a problem using the dollar a day approach. So I mean, when you have it been looked at in that kind of way, you can't get problems getting the right policies and programs out to move to reduce poverty. Um, and ex also, you have a situation where you are, if you are focusing on one dollar twenty-five, uh, you have vill uh, in villages, rural areas, there are local farmers they produce most of their commodities. Again, if you quantify the amount of um, agricultural commodities that they produce and they consume, it's very easy to get to that $1.25. I, I personally think the $1.25 was working <clears throat> on the assumption that there are several other um, things that were expected to be in place. Uh, for example, um, in many parts in Nigeria, you have to produce your own water, good quality water. You have to produce, to an extent, your own electricity you have to produce your own sewage and so on system. So if you're focusing on a dollar twenty-five a day, you miss the point because yes, you can get a dollar a day, but you still need a bit extra to get, to not provide for all these other things that will go way in excess of a dollar twenty-five. So if you target a dollar twenty-five a day, you still do not get that feeling that people are coming out of poverty because a lot of things that are meant to be provided that have been provided are not captured under that income measure. And that's again what I think the MPI is extremely useful in understanding what we are doing, uh, what is going on in Nigeria. Well, we, those are the data sources. We used the AK method because we felt it was uh, intuitive and easy to compute. Um, we considered 10 different indicators across three dimensions, education, health, and living standards. Each person, as you know, is assigned a depreciation score and so on. I think we understand how that works. And the results um, was that um, the MPI headcount was 0.195 as shown above. 
and higher value was recorded for the rare areas at 0.25 and the urban areas at 0.04. In terms of average proportion of depreciation, deprivation rather, the results show 30.6% average proportion of poverty at the national level uh, with 14.1% in the urban areas, 35.4% in the rural areas. In terms of the decomposition of, of poverty, um, education deprivations was the least contributor to poverty from the results we got, contributing 11.1% nationally, um, while health deprivations were, deprivations rather, were the biggest contributors to poverty, responsible for 48.7% nationally. Um, I would, the two major dimensions responsible for poverty, of course, were health and um, living standards. And under the health dep deprivations, nutrition accounted for a significant proportion of depreciations, the health deprivations in the health category. And under living standards, the results re revealed that 51.3% of households in Nigeria have no access to electricity, 67% no access to sanitation, 44% um, no access to safe water, and so on. I think that the, I think that the MPI holds the potential as a potent tool for measuring uh, poverty in most developing countries, but in particular Nigeria, like I said earlier, particularly because of a very large population. I think it reveals better the nature and direction of um, poverty, displaying, uh, displaying uh, overlapping deprivations experienced by Nigerians. And I think it is also very useful in informing policy decisions. Nigeria has, since 1960, I think we've had over 30 different um, initiatives to reduce poverty. But then the reduction in poverty has been remarkably small, and nobody seems to understand why, with all these interventions over 20, 30 years, poverty, using the income approach anyway, has reduced by only about 2, 3 percent. And I think this helps for us to understand the nature of poverty so that you can target um, what the, actually the problem is. And until we do that, I think uh, Pali was talking about the importance of data until you understand how this data, what is actually happening. You can actually, you, you will not design those policies that will actually tackle the problem. And I think that's probably what has been happening as far as Nigeria is concerned. I will not go into the, um, into the discussion about what Nigeria has been doing as far as poverty elevation is concerned. I don't want to risk getting a hand around my shoulder, but I will go straight into um, the lessons learned from my experience. Um, I think working, by the way, we're working with OPHI and UNDP, to, we're working with them to further enhance institutional capacity development index. Now, we have not gone really far in terms of using this um, significantly in terms of policy decisions, uh, and there are many reasons for that. One is we're in a political period, we have elections early next year, so of course politicians are not particularly interested at this time to be discussing poverty, uh, so there's a slowdown in that process. So all we're trying to do here is build institutional capacity. We are, we are getting our staff train, trained in uh, competing the API. We are trying to sensitize all stakeholders at different levels of government, the private sector, development agencies, the civil society organizations. Um, we are trying to promote the benefits of MPI at the subnational levels, but like I said, it's a bit of, uh, none of the state governors wants to discuss poverty at the time when they're going to elections early next year. And we intend to be computing the MPI on an annual basis. I think um, some of the challenges, um, of course, the quantity and quality of the data available, because we have to work with existing data, I you know the MPI is designed from a usually a list of different indicators. So you have an indicator that's available in one year, it's not available in the next year, and so on. Uh, we are trying to do it, uh, uh, we, and we notice that we're trying to do an analysis to see if this affects the results. 
So if you use one indicator in 2012 and use another one in 2009, how does that affect the numbers when 2010 or 2011 numbers are available? I, well, I agree that this should be country specific. Um, I, I have a little problem with that because every country is allowed to decide the dimension of the indicator to use. Now, if I want to make my country look good, I will, so I select those indicators that make the country look good. And then the next year and two years after, if the indicators are not good, I pick a new set of indicators. And I, so I think there should be some clear rules guiding how we move these things around. Otherwise, people would just be coming up with numbers to suit them, uh, themselves very, very easily. Um, and like I said, the, um, the fact that this com developing countries, well, Nigeria anyway, there's always statistics offices. Our, our statistics office is underfunded. So you cannot get all the indi indicators you need every year to compute the index. And that's actually a problem. I think if we are going, if we are going ahead with this post-2015, maybe it should, we should insist that this is an in, the data requirements of the MPI is an integral part of the targets. That way it forces countries to have to commit funds to ensuring that these numbers are common. I think that's something, as far as Nigeria is concerned, I think we need to, um, to take forward. Um, I think with that, I think um, with that, uh, that summarizes the experience we're having in Nigeria. Thank you once again for inviting me. <laughs>